Hello everyone in CardioMinds channel and we are having today the second lecture in the topic of guidelines of cardiovascular disease prevention and today we are discussing the target population. When we speak about the process of screening or risk stratification, we should determine accurately our target population on whom we are going to work in order to select the high-risk people who will benefit from risk factor control and by which we are aiming to reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease in this population. We have two types of screening, which are the opportunistic screening and systematic screening. Let's start with the opportunistic screening. This type is performed without a predefined strategy as it is done when a person attends a healthcare facility for a specific reason. Like for example, he is coming because having chest pain, shortness of breath, he is complaining of elevated blood pressure. At that time, I am trying to screen this person for presence of risk factors of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Like what? Like high blood pressure, hyperlipidemia, like diabetes. So in this case, I take the chance that this patient or this person attended the healthcare facility in order to screen him for risk factors. That's why it is called opportunistic screening. The pros of this process is that it is effective at increasing detection rate and that's why it is recommended whenever a patient attends healthcare facility. But it's cones that it is missing a large number of population who don't attend healthcare facilities because I don't perform the screening unless the person attends by himself or herself at the healthcare facility. Also, the benefit on the clinical outcome is uncertain at the time being through so randomized clinical trials. The second type is a systematic screening and from its name we can conclude what does it mean. It can be performed in the general population with call and recall of patient or in targeted subpopulation like for example diabetic patients or those with family history of premature cardiovascular disease. So in this type of screening I don't wait for the population to come to the healthcare facility for some reason. No, I try to call them in order to screen them for risk factors and so perform my risk stratification. The result of course is an improvement in risk factor control but so far we don't have strong evidence of benefit on the cardiovascular outcomes when we speak about screening at the general population level. Another challenge for systematic screening is that in men more than 40 years and women more than 50 years with no known risk factors so we are speaking about apparently healthy is not cost effective. No benefit so far that it does reduce the subsequent cardiovascular events and the risk of premature death, especially at the level of short-term follow-up. And of course, we are speaking about a high cost in order to perform this level of screening at the level of general population. But we cannot deny that it increased detection of cardiovascular risk factors and so I can start to perform risk factor control in those persons in whom I have detected risk factors by the systematic screening. That's why systematic screening is still performed in many countries despite the absence of strong benefit on its cost effectiveness. So we need to answer this question in order to reach a conclusion. Screening is for whom? The task force this year reached the conclusion regarding the individuals with risk factors that systematic screening for cardiovascular risk is class 1 in any individual with any one or more major vascular risk factors like for example family history of premature cardiovascular disease, familial hyperlipidemia, cardiovascular risk factors like smoking, hypertension, diabetes, raised lipid level, obesity, or other comorbidities that can be considered as risk modifiers. So here the systematic assessment is class one indication. Those who have risk of developing hypertension, like for example overweight or having a family history of hypertension, in this case opportunistic screening of blood pressure is class 2A because this patient have increased risk for developing hypertension. In the apparently healthy men more than 40 years or women more than 50 years, we spoke about the challenge of cost effectiveness. The guidelines put a class 2B for performing systematic or opportunistic screening in those population with no known risk factors. So here it may be considered to perform this type of screening. And of course, the clinical sense of the physician is important to determine who has a priority to be screened. So it is not class 3. It's class 2B but may have a stronger evidence in the future. How often will you have the screening repeated? 
It is class 2B to repeat it after five years or even after shorter time if the patient had rest closer to the threshold. So it is not a process that is performed once. No, I should repeat it to be a dynamic process and reassessing the patient risk in the future. And so far, there is no evidence to perform systematic cardiovascular risk assessment in men less than 40 years or women less than 50 years if they don't have any cardiovascular risk factor T is class 3. But pay an attention, I am speaking here about systematic screening. But this doesn't mean that you are not allowed to perform risk assessment in an individual who attends your clinic in whom you are suspecting that he may have a high risk of cardiovascular disease due to, for example, unhealthy lifestyle because you may think that this patient is having a high risk despite the absence of strong risk factors mentioned before. So in this case, you are allowed to perform risk assessment for this individual. But when we speak about class 3 here, we are speaking about class 3 for systematic screening in this population who are still young and don't have any known cardiovascular risk factors. So at the end of this video, we can conclude today that determining the target population is detrimental to the process of risk stratification with the priorities, of course, for the patients with risk factor for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. These are the target population who have the most benefit from the process of screening and the process of risk factor control. Thank you very much for watching this video and we are speaking the next time about the risk factors.